Well, once again, Merry Christmas. It's a great joy to be with you guys this morning. And, and you know, from my family to yours, I would love just to share Merry Christmas. You know, we kind of experienced a little Christmas miracle this year. Everyone in this photo of our family is smiling, even little Lainey. If you don't know our little Lainey Pearl, she's the redheaded one on the lap of our Layla Love. But there's a smirk, but she is smiling. And, you know, it reminds me of a photo like this, even a time like this as we're gathered together, that Christmas, this entire season, it brings a whole different array of experiences. I mean, there's a lot of excitement and to a certain degree, fulfillment that can come at this time, especially when you're young. Now, Christmas when you're young, it may have a lot to do with kind of getting or receiving maybe that, that special gift that you've just been pining for. I mean, isn't that what Christmas is all about? No, right? We're in church. That's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. We know that. But, but getting and receiving, I mean, that's a fun dynamic of Christmas. It's a part of it, especially in our culture, especially when you're young. As you grow older, Christmas may have to do more with, with giving or may with, you know, watching those special people in your life receive a gift that's meaningful to them and giving. That can be fun, to, to a certain degree fulfilling. And I would say that giving is actually more fulfilling, more blessed than receiving. Didn't someone else say that once, right? Yeah. Well, I would be remiss, I think we all would, if we didn't recognize that there is somewhat of a, of a shadow side to this season. You say, what do you mean? Some of the traditions, some of the sights, some of the sounds, some of the smells... They, they can stimulate or bring to mind feelings or memories of, of loss or grief or pain. It's true that Christmas can be an exciting time, a fun time, to a certain degree a fulfilling time, but it can also be hard, it can be challenging, it can be painful. But there's also many, many good things that we're reminded of during this time, the time of Christmas. We're often reminded of the importance of family, importance of friends, the blessings we have in life. There's the reminder, I think, at this season to, to be one who's thankful, to be one who lives a lifestyle of giving and, and forgiveness. And I don't know, at this time, at least for me, there's this reminder that there's more joy in living a life like that than there is in the constant pursuit of more, more success in a career, making more money or, or having more experiences. But Christmas seems to be a time where you're reminded of the blessing there is and just living in a content way. And, and you know, these are all good things. And I would say this, for many of these good things that Christmas reminds us of, there's chapter and verse in the Bible. And Christmas time, it seems like it sentimentalizes those things, making us remember them or, or reprioritize them. And I don't know about you, but it seems like Christian, Christian, Christmas entertainment, it can kind of add to that thinking and experiencing of Christmas kind of in a sentimental way. Many of the songs or the movies, they, they kind of focus on some of these good things as the ultimate takeaway for the ultimate meaning of Christmas. I mean, friendship, bravery, keeping the spirit of Christmas alive, and locomotives. <laughs> what movie is that? The Polar Express, right? It's on loop in our family. The theme of family, the spirit of Christmas, overcoming challenges, and physically beating up burglars. Anyone know what that movie is? <laughs> Home Alone, right? Or maybe the theme that anyone can change. Christmas is a... It's a spirit, it's a state of mind, it's a joyous feeling, and there's always who hash. What movie would that be? The Grinch. Or a change of perspective can ultimately lead to embrace a life that, well, it's a wonderful life. See, these themes, they're good. Maybe not physically beating up burglars, but every other theme is good in that sense. And here's what I want to share with you. Christmas time can bring for some excitement and joy, 
a degree of fulfillment, sorrow, challenge, or it can be a reminder of many, many good things in life to be thankful for, to embrace. And for many, almost most Americans, that's Christmas. That's what it is. It's sentimental. It can be fun, it can be somber, it can be good. And we're in a world where Christmas is often thought in that way in a very sentimental, endearing way. Let me share with you something I read this week that I thought was interesting. It says, a recent survey indicated in America that a fewer number of people are celebrating Christmas as a religious holiday. Of those surveyed here in the U.S., 57%, down from 64 a few years ago, say they believe what the Gospels teach about the birth of Jesus. Here's what Christmas is for most people. Christmas is about getting new things and spending time with family and friends. Let me say this with you this morning. Let me share this with you this morning. What a joy it is to be together this morning to celebrate Christmas because of Jesus. Amen? I mean, that's why we're here. We know that it's not about Ralphie's Red Ryder air rifle. We know that Bing Crosby and Burl Ives, even, even the pop queen of Christmas herself, Mariah Carey, with her song that annually makes her in residual $3 million a year, All I Want for Christmas is You, that's not what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about Jesus. But, but not just in a, in a sentimental kind of way. That same article, the author goes on to say this, speaking to believers, those of us who may show up to Christmas Eve on a Sunday morning service, this author says, you know, we can sentimentalize the manger surrounded by farm animals with baby Jesus in the center, asleep on the hay, but from the biblical standpoint, Christmas is actually the fulfillment of the first phase of God's great rescue mission. If we fail to understand and celebrate Christmas in a way that overlooks or even, even obscures that, then we've, to some degree, maybe sentimentalized Christmas. Christmas is about Jesus, and not just in a, a sentimental way. You know, kind of like sweet eight pounds, six ounce newborn infant Jesus who doesn't even know a word yet, just a little infant, so cuddly, but still omnipotent. You know, that's theologian Ricky Bobby, and if you don't know him, you don't need to know him, but that, that's not what Christmas is about, kind of sentimentalizing Jesus. It's about God's, let me have your attention on this. It's about God's great rescue mission into the world and your part and my part in that great mission. To be one who receives the forgiveness, the life, the hope, the salvation. That's our part. And to be one who shares, announces, brings out into the open, proclaims, makes much of, to go and tell on the mountain, as it were, who Jesus is. That's what Christmas is about. And I want to ask you, if I can, to grab the, the program you received as you walked in this morning. I want to read to you, if I can, the lyrics of this Christmas carol. I want to start from the chorus, which is actually drawn from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 52. Here's the chorus. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Other renditions would say that he, he is Lord. And then drawing from, from Luke chapter 2, the author shares in these verses the story. Here's the story. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Verse 2, the shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Down in a lowly manger, our humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. That's the Christmas story. 
And it's astoundingly amazing. I mean, the shepherds are often remembered in Christmas in kind of a sentimental way, in Christmas songs and maybe our nativity scenes. We kind of maybe picture them with, with flowing robes, maybe a little sheep around the neck or something, shepherd's staff, taking their place right alongside Mary and Joseph, just after a baby is born. Because that's always the scene after a baby is born, right? Everyone's serene and calm. and that, That's kind of the, the dynamic we see, that the shepherds are there as if they almost belonged there. Like, that's where shepherds should be. But you know, in reality, shepherds were often not welcomed anywhere. They were kind of seen as vagabonds, nomads, on the lowest rung of the societal ladder. And that's one of the reasons the story of Christmas is amazing. I mean, imagine with me just for a moment that you're not overly familiar with this story. And I were to tell you that the time had finally arrived for God to announce the birth, the arrival of the Messiah. And if you knew your Old Testament at all, you go, this is a big deal. This is something that God gave a preview of in Genesis chapter 3. All throughout the prophets, the Psalms, they've, they've written poetry and prophecy about this coming of this great Messiah, and now the time has come. How would you announce the birth, the arrival of God coming in the flesh? Who would you go to? Maybe Caesar, the emperor of Rome? Wouldn't you think to start there? Start at the top. If you want the word to get out, get it out. Or maybe telling at least King Herod, who had rule over that region. Or maybe go to the high priest in Jerusalem. So the religious elite, those who know about this, can get the word out. All of these individuals, for me, make sense for the birth announcement of Jesus. But here's the thing. The palace doesn't hear. The temple, it's quiet. Jerusalem doesn't know. The most important birth announcement in history goes to a group of vagabonds outside of Bethlehem. I mean, these guys, they wouldn't even show up to a Christmas Eve morning service. That's who these guys are. And the shepherds did what the angels told them to do. They went to Bethlehem to see this baby. And Luke tells us that when they had seen him, they spread the word. See, listen. After receiving the birth announcement, listen, after receiving the announcement of his birth, they became the birth announcement. And that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is not informational. Cr Christmas is not sentimental. Christmas is transformational. And if I were to entitle our, our message, our time together, this sermon this morning, here's what I would share with you. Go Tell it on the mountain. It's not just what Christmas is truly about, but it is, in part, what life is all about. Let me say that one more time. Go tell it on the mountain. It's not just what Christmas is about, but it is, in part, in part, what life is all about. You see, we were made, designed, created, I believe, for, for at least two simple reasons, two significant parts to play, to know God and to make him known. And we're all familiar with Christmas cookies. I sure am. Christmas cards, Christmas carols. Well, as we close this morning, I would like to share with you just two simple things, a Christmas call and a Christmas challenge. Here's the call of Christmas. It's an invitation to know God, to know him. That's part one. That, that truly is the transformational, the, the call of Christmas that God sent his son. John chapter three puts it so simply and so beautifully. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal, what does it say there, church? life. Have eternal life. This is the call of Christmas. And you begin a relationship with God is, is such a simple thing. You realize that sin separates us from God. 
Be it a little white lie or a lifestyle that's not pleasing to him, Romans 3 says everyone is in the same boat. We've all sinned. We realize that there's sin, but we recognize that Jesus, he's the Savior. The Bible tells us very clearly that God showed his great love for us. How? By sending Christ to die for us, even while we were still sinners. We repent of our sin. Recognize that sin leads to death, and Jesus brings forgiveness and life and meaning and hope, and we simply receive him. Romans chapter 10 says this, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, knowing God is not believing a creed or going to church, but it's having Christ himself take residence in your life. And then you simply release control of your life to him. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. The call of Christmas, this first part, it's a relationship with God. Starts in such a simple way. Recognizing that I'm a sinner and that I trust Jesus for the forgiveness of my sins and I open up the door of my life and my heart and my entirety of my life to him. And he becomes my Lord and my Savior. See, the Christmas call is to know him. And the Christmas challenge is to make him known. Go tell it on the mountain. Let me read to you one final thing about this song. I read this this week. I thought it was interesting. This song is not an invitation. If you have the time, you may want to consider finding a high place and sharing a little bit about what you've heard. No, that's not what the Go Tell It on the Mountain's about. This song is an imperative. Go tell it on the mountain. You see, after receiving the birth announcement, the shepherds, they became the birth announcement. And this is the, the Christmas challenge. I would call it the commission of Jesus to all who know him to make him known. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, we read what is often remembered as the, the Christmas star, the star of Bethlehem. It's known in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, as his star. And it was a sign that prompted and guided the wise men from the east to Jesus. And that's our challenge. That's our job. That's our, our role, the challenge of Christmas, to point others to Jesus. Let your life be a proclamation. Let your life become a birth announcement, allowing everyone to see God's goodness, his love, his forgiveness has broken into our world because of Christmas. And Christmas, it only means something to the world when we live like it does.